Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to show you my playthrough of Sonic Forces, the tag team stage at the Eurogamer Expo. Um, headphone users, you might want to turn your volume down just a little bit as the background noise is quite bad. Um, first I'm just going to show you the video as it was the actual playthrough and then I'm going to replay the video and actually give some commentary on it. So hope you enjoy that. Okay, thanks for listening. Okay guys, so welcome to the commentary part of the video. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to replay the video that you just watched, only this time I'm going to talk over the top of it and maybe pause it on occasion so I can give you some more details as to what actually was going on uh, whilst I was playing this, because I did play through this stage quite a few times. Okay, here we go. So this initial section here, when you boost, um, you are deliberately kept in the center of the pathway by the game. It's quite a scripted and automated moment. Okay, just pause the game here. That swing there that I did with the avatar, um, you have to do that yourself. Um, it's kind of like if it was a homing attack icon. Unfortunately, you can only use the grapple hooks during moments like that. It's There's no freedom at all for using it. It's either it's scripted or very key specific moments of the game. Now, when I land here on this path, um, you'll see I do a boost to try and make the ramp jump. What this is this is really strange. Um, I only was I was only able to achieve the perfect path which follows the rings once. Um, most other times I kind of fell a bit short, so I'm not sure what's going on here. But the other really weird thing is, no matter what you do, even if you do not touch the controller, the moment you hit the boost button, you'll either hug the left or hug the right wall every time. As you can see there, I just hugged the left. Uh, this section is scripted. It's about five seconds of scripted. Right, okay, let's just pause. This section here, um, for the purposes of demonstrating the game, I actually bothered to do it correctly, which um, means you hammer the square button and you do the double boost. However, I decided to deliberately fail this once. I didn't push the button and I didn't do it. I actually failed it. And from what I could see, it had no negative effect. The, the sequence played out exactly as it would. You still get the double boost and you're still able to beat it. Okay, let's start it up again. You'll notice as well that I'm not actually touching the analog stick very much at all here. In fact, it is possible not to touch anything and you will still get pretty much a maximum score. In fact, um, it's actually better not to touch the controller because what will happen is you will get all those rings at the end. This falling sequence is not as difficult as, as some people have made it out to be. It's very, very simple. Okay, let's pause it. Now this section is the first, is a, is a wisp power-up section. If you have the lightning wisp, you can actually follow this trail of rings pretty much to the other end, the entirety of the stage. 
Um, if you have the Burst Wisp, there is also another path which happens shortly after the Egg Pawns that you see slightly ahead. Now this next sequence looks cool, but to actually play it's very boring, because literally you're just pressing and holding down one button at a time, there's not really much going on. It looks cool, but it's very boring to play. Also, take note of my actual ring counter now, I'm at 194 rings, and what's about to happen is very silly. Yeah, so here we go, we're basically doing what's the equivalent of a Sonic Adventure light dash, and you literally end up chaining these wisp powers together and you can do it for pretty much the entire stage there's actually two paths here the right one is the better path I'm not sure if it's faster but it's definitely the most interesting and yeah then you switch back to Sonic here and there's a red ring at the end and that's it you fall down into the bomb room I'm just gonna pause it Okay, this is really strange. Um, what I did once when I came through here is I wanted to see what was at, if there was anything behind me. Because I know that a lot of people just go straight forward to the end of the stage. However, what I found is the game actually forces you forward. Yes, you can still trigger the boost and you still have some control, but you can't actually go backwards. The game will keep pushing you forward no matter what you do. Which is kind of odd. Also, take a look at my ring counter. I'm now at 681 rings after barely 30 seconds worth of gameplay. It's, yeah, um, that seems a bit too easy. And also look at the time. The time's at 1 minute 24 seconds. This stage takes less than 1 minute 30 to beat. And that's it. Um, people have, some people have said, that can't be the full stage, it's got to be a shortened stage. Um, nope, that is definitely the full stage. Um, the reason for that is if you take a look at the red ring indicator when I do pick up some red rings, um, the last red ring you see in the video I believe is the last ring in the actual stage. Unfortunately I was slightly off angle there so I didn't get it. But that is the last red ring in the stage. Um, it isn't yeah, it's not very long at all. Um, overall, uh, Forces was it was sort of okay. I think if you've never played a Sonic game before, you'll really like it. Otherwise, you've kind of seen it all before. I actually did a review, uh, an impressions post over at the Sonic Stadium. So go ahead and give that a read if you want to find out more. Okay, guys. Thanks very much for watching, and see you again next time. Goodbye.